Welcome to the Love Lab. I am the Love Doctor. And today we're talking about something that everyone is wondering. Which of the 16 personality types are most compatible with each other? Romantically. I always get comments that are like, Frank, you're the Love Doctor. <laughs> I'm an INFP, what type should I be looking for in a potential partner? Or I'm a INTJ, am I a good match with the ENFP? So in this video we're gonna be answering those burning questions. Get some oven mitts on because these questions are gonna be burning hot. The answers will be blazing. So let's get into the compatibility of the different types and just in case any viewers are wondering, even though our lovely sponsor of this video is a type matching service, they have not influenced me or told me what to say or had any effect over any of the content in the rest of this video. Just so you know, because I'm sure some of, you are, some of you INTPs are gonna be like, did they tell you what to do in here? No! <laughs> Wow, Frank, you just come right out of the gate attacking one particular personality type. They had it coming, okay? I only attack people who deserve it. Let's start super simple. We're gonna go through the different letters of the personality type and see what happens if you have it different or the same. Is it better to have someone with the same letters or different letters? So the first letter of the personality type is I or E, introvert or extrovert. This is one where I don't think compatibility is affected too much whether the type is I or E, whether you date someone who has the same letter or a different letter. And that is because, as I have mentioned in many videos before, this first letter, the I or E, is very imprecise. It's not really giving you a precise idea of how introverted or extroverted someone is. So you could get someone who is uh, an E type, an ENFP, for example, who's more toward the middle, who isn't really that outgoing. Or you could have an ISFJ who seems to be more extroverted. So it doesn't really matter in terms of MBTI type, but if we're just looking at perceived introversion or extroversion, you wanna find someone in the same general ballpark. Someone who you can keep up with or they can keep up with you, that you're not gonna be like totally burning each other out. The next letter is N or S, intuition or sensing. This is one where I think if you're gonna have any letter be the same, it might as well be this one. Intuition and sensing are how we see the world, how we take in information and then how we arrange it in our minds. The intuitives are looking at things from a big picture perspective, whereas the sensing types are looking at the details. The intuitives focus on the abstract, the sensors focus on the concrete. And not just actual, literal concrete. <laughs> So stupid, it's barely a joke. And I think you can be different with this letter, that's fine. I think what might happen is sensing types look at intuitives as being like a bit weird because they're looking at this abstract stuff rather than the obvious reality right in front of them. Whereas intuitives might look at sensors as being just like too caught up in the minutia of what is real. So yeah, that second letter might be good to have the same one. The next letter is T or F, thinking or feeling. This is how we make decisions. The thinkers are making decisions using logic, using how are we just gonna get this to work. The feelers are making decisions using their emotions and using the importance, the value placed on things. I'm gonna give you maybe a controversial opinion right now. So hold on to your butts. I think it is good for a relationship to have a feeler and a thinker together. I think that having this particular difference is good because it keeps you as a couple balanced out. You're not going too far with all the feelings and emotions and you're not going too far with just blunt logic. There are problems that can come up when you have a feeler and a thinker together. I think the biggest thing is that feelers get their feelings hurt when the thinkers <laughs> start thinking. A lot of times thinking types can just be critical because that's how their mind works. They wanna poke holes in things so that they can find the best solution. But someone who prefers feeling is not really used to that and might feel like they are being attacked. So in that situation, the feelers need to realize, don't, don't take it so personally. Likewise, the thinker might look at the feeler and be like, you're being totally illogical here. But what the thinker needs to realize is that the feeler is trying to prioritize things and make decisions based on what they are feeling 
is important, not necessarily what's gonna get results. Then we have the last letter, J or P, judging or perceiving. The judges are gonna be a bit more organized, they wanna plan things out. The P types are gonna be a little less organized, they wanna keep their options open, they wanna be spontaneous. This is another instance where I think different is good. J types and P types go together. Is it bad if you match up with someone who has that same last letter? No, not at all. I just think that this is a particular dynamic where having someone who is a bit more structured and someone who is a bit more free form works well. It's all about balance, baby. <laughs> Of course, the problem is if they are too different, if they're not able to make some kind of meeting in the middle, the J type is gonna be like, will you please just get your stuff in order? And the P type will be like, you can't tell me what to do. You're not my mom. Or, or something like that. <laughs> in our next segment, we're gonna get a bit more detailed and look at the specific types and which ones work best together theoretically. So stay tuned. Welcome back. We're going to start to get more specific now in our talk about Myers-Briggs types and compatibility in the romantic arena. Frank, you said that so awkwardly. <laughs> and we're going to talk a little bit about cognitive functions here, but don't worry, I will talk you through it if you don't know what those really mean. The cognitive functions are really the inner workings of each of the 16 personalities. The four letters in a personality type are the code telling us what cognitive functions each type has, which in turn gives us much more insight into how they see the world and make decisions and gives us more insight into how they may or may not be compatible with other types. So let's start by looking at the perceiving functions. Whoa, hey folks, video editor Frank here. So in this next segment of the video, I talk about the perceiving functions, intuition and sensing. I go into detail explaining what they are and then I end it all by saying this. But, you know, the perceiving function is not the biggest deal in the world, not the thing that I would get hung up on. What I think is more important are the decision-making functions, the thinking and the feeling. That is where I think there is the most potential for conflict and misunderstanding. So, why would I leave something in the video <laughs> when I sum it up in the video as not being that important? So, an extended talk about the perceiving functions, let's leave it for another day, it's not that important. Let's move on, let's get to the next part of the video. Oh, and be sure to hit the like button because I think I forgot to say that earlier. So the FJ and TP types have the same decision-making functions. They both have extroverted feeling and introverted thinking. The FJ types prefer extroverted feeling. The TP types prefer introverted thinking. They both have both. They both use both. It's just one prefers the feeling, one prefers the thinking. So the thinking, the logic to them, because it's introverted, is personal. It's all on them. They have to make sense of things for themselves. But the feeling and the values and the emotions are shared with the group. It's like we have to look outward to really come up with what the value and importance of things is. We have to have some kind of harmony there. But then we have the FP and the TJ types who have different decision-making functions. They have introverted feeling and extroverted thinking. Of course, the FP types prefer introverted feeling. The TJ types prefer extroverted thinking. So it's like the feelings, the value, the importance we placed on things, that is personal. That is up to me to decide, but the thinking, the logic, and how we work things out, that's something we gotta do together as a group. So you can see how if you get this crossed up, if you have, for example, a TP type who is with a TJ type, there's gonna be a little bit of butting heads because introverted thinking and extroverted thinking, they're both doing the thinking thing. They're both trying to figure things out logically. They're both just trying to get things to work. They're trying to find a solution, but they're going about it in very different ways. Or if you get an FJ type and a TJ type together, yes, they are both using an extroverted deciding function. You've got extroverted feeling and you've got extroverted thinking, but they're going about it in very different ways. The extroverted feeler is just trying to figure out how can we make everyone happy? How can we all agree on what is important? Whereas the TJ type is, I don't care if you're happy, I'm just trying to get something to work and I will like beat everyone over the head to get it done. There is a lot of potential, <laughs> a lot of potential for conflict if you start to mix these 
decision making functions in a match. Mix and match, that's right. <laughs> is it something that is impossible? Is it a deal breaker? No, but it is something that can be shocking if you have like, for example, an FP type, an introverted feeler who's talking to an introverted thinker and it's like, what? why are you making decisions this way? It makes no sense to me. It's outside of my language of decision making. But you know what advantage you have, dear viewer, is that you are understanding personality types so you can just realize, oh, this person isn't weird, they just have a different cognitive function set than me and I can work with that. So I think if you have types that are very different, you could have, yes, that shock initially of like, oh, why are you doing things? But I think you also get that opposites attract thing where it's like, ooh, you are so different, I am attracted to that. That is what opposites attract means if you didn't know. But there is the potential for conflict because of misunderstanding. Whereas if you get types together that are very similar, there will be kind of an instant comfort and rapport between you because it's like, oh, we are talking the same language, this is great. But you could have issues come up and conflict when it comes time to define each other's roles. And I don't mean honey rolls, I don't mean breakfast rolls. For instance, if you have two feeling types together, someone at some point is gonna have to be the more logical one because you just need to have balance in life. So there could be some conflict arising between which one of us is going to get to be the feeler, which we both are, and which is going to have to like change a little bit and rely more on thinking to make sure that we're balanced. It might sound silly, but that could be a big source of conflict. The other thing is when two very different types are matched up together, there is a lot of potential for growth. You will be strong where the other person is weak and vice versa, which can, if you stick together and work through Conflict will bring out the best in both of you, will bring... <laughs> you'll, you'll grow and stuff. <laughs> if you are very similar, you can still grow because you'll have to find balance on your own, but there's also the potential for becoming too imbalanced and like enabling each other because you'll have the same weaknesses and the same strengths and you'll be like, hey, I'm weak in that point, you're weak in that point, let's just not even worry about it, let's not try to grow. Ultimately, compatibility comes down to things that are not quite explainable by type, such as shared experiences, shared values, shared goals, shared sense of humor. Although I guess you could argue sense of humor could be a little bit affected by personality type, but we'll leave that for another video. Type should really be used to understand the other person and where they're coming from to be able to work with them. Because compatibility, in my opinion, is ultimately something that you work at and develop. It's not something that just happens day one and it's good to go forever. Don't forget to download this video sponsor, You're My Type, at the links down in the description or in the app stores. Thanks for watching. If you watched all the way to the end, leave a pony emoji in the comments. If you'd like to get a bit more into how the 16 personalities make decisions, check out this video right here. Or if you're just curious to look through the whole playlist of educational 16 personalities videos, click the playlist right here. Thanks for watching and until next time, stay cool and attractive.